his names? Gabby. Brian. Gabby, Brian, okay. What's going on? How come you're crying? I'm just crying. We've just been fighting this morning. Some personal issues. A body matching the description of missing woman Gabby Petio has been found on the 19th of September 2021 by crews searching a national park in the U.S. states of Wyoming. As this case is just getting started, we can expect continuous updates to be coming in. I'll start by giving you some background information on Gabby Petito. She is a 22-year-old American woman from Suffolk County, New York, who was reported missing on the 11th of September 2021 while traveling with her fiancé across the United States. Her fiancé's name was Brian Laundry. The two met in high school, and in 2017, Gabby graduated from Bayport Blue Point School. Their relationship grew stronger, and Gabby moved in with Brian and his parents in Northport, Florida in 2019. In July of 2020, they became engaged, but because of coronavirus, they decided to postpone their wedding plans until later, and instead, they decided to go on a nice long trip. A year later, on the 2nd of July 2021, they left New York for a four-month trip in Gabby's Ford Transit Connect van, which had been converted into a camper van, allowing them to sleep and cook inside as they travelled. Gabby documented her journey through social media. According to her Instagram post, the pair travelled from Florida to Kansas, Colorado, then Utah, visiting several national parks and natural attractions. In July, the couple posted regular updates about their journey to their Instagram account, which shows Gabby having a good time and the posts were relatively normal. On the 12th of August, the pair were seen fighting by a witness who furthermore called the police to report a possible domestic violence. Hi, uh, I'm calling. I'm right on the corner of Main Street by Moonflower and... We're driving by and I'd like to report a domestic dispute to Florida with the white van, Florida license plate. Uh, we drove by and the gentleman was slapping the girl. He was slapping her? If you're interested in listening to the full 911 call, then I'll link it in the description down below. The police furthermore responded to the call and pulled the couple's van over. The police report and body camera video were later released in which we can see Gabby sat at the back of the police car while Brian stood outside of their camper van. Brian explained to the police that they got into a small argument after he walked into the van with dirty feet. During this, Gabby slapped him when she thought he was going to leave her alone in Moab. Brian insisted he didn't hit Gabby back. However, this wasn't consistent with what was said on the 911 call. During the questioning, it was clear Brian has visible scratches on his upper body to include his face, neck and arms. As a result, Gabby was nearly arrested, but since Brian didn't want to press charges and the officer didn't deem her actions as chargeable crimes, so the police took steps to de-escalate the situation by separating the pair for the evening, with Brian staying in a hotel and Gabby in her camping van. His name's... Gabby. I'm Brian. Gabby, Brian, okay. What's going on? How come you're crying? I'm just crying. We've just been fighting this morning. Some personal issues. You want to tell me what's going on? Yeah, I don't know. It's just some days I, <laughs> I have really bad OCD. And okay. I just, I was just cleaning and straightening up the back of the van before, and I was apologizing to him and saying, I'm sorry that I'm so mean because sometimes I have OCD and sometimes I just get really frustrated. Not like mean towards him. I just like, I mean, I guess my vibe is like, I would be out here and be like in a bad mood. And I was just saying, I'm sorry if I'm in a bad mood. I've just been really stressed. I had so much work I was doing on my computer this morning. What do you do for a living? Um, well, I, I hate to forget an organic juice bar, but I just hit my job. Okay. I was a nutritionist. That's, oh, what, okay. that's my That's my job. Cool. And I just um, hit my job to travel across the country. And I'm trying to start a blog. And okay. I just have a blog. So, so I've been building my website. So I've just been really stressed. And, he doesn't really believe that I could do any of it, so that's kind of been like a, I don't know, he's like a downer, I don't know, we've just been fighting all morning, and 
And he wouldn't let me in the car before. And Why I, wouldn't he let you in the car? Because <laughs> you told me, your OCD? told me I needed to calm down. Yeah. <laughs> Take a seat. Watch me. I didn't get very, I didn't get overtly physical. I was just trying to keep her away and if not get hit. And then I got really loud and like that's probably your everyone's attention where I was going. Yeah. Back up, get away, just give me a... Uh, okay, so, so you I, said you pushed her to create some distance, obviously, yeah. right? What happened after that? What got, what got the scratches on your eye? The phone. The phone? Mm -hmm. So you pushed her and she hit you? She was... I wasn't... I, I, it wasn't like a push and she jumped on me. She was, she was already... She was already... I don't want to... Swing. She was already swinging and I was... Multiple... Yeah. Yeah. A lot of angles, a lot of nails, a lot of rings. Yeah, you got yeah. three scratches in your neck. You got one on your left side of your nose. You've got one in your face here, and you've got four that are bleeding over there. So I just try to put some two hands from there. Do you mind lifting up your right sleeve for me? I'm curious about something. Oh, oh. Okay. Yeah. I tried a little What's bit of nails. I'm, I suppose fingernails, but yeah, I'm not complaining. Absolutely. I'm not complaining about fingernails. Is it bruised or tender or anything like no, that? No, no, no. Okay. I'm fine, and I love you. I, I hope she doesn't have too many complaints about me. <laughs> I'm just, uh, you know, I, I feel bad I have to get so public. I was just trying to be loud to get some distance, you know, right. try to make her calm down and be like, look, everyone's watching. Can I just, I'll say crisscross applesauce, but can I just sit in the shade because I'm bald? Um, I'll, no, it's okay. it's okay. I'll give you some shade. <laughs> Sound good? All right, just hang tight for me. I've decided I am not going to cite you for domestic violence battery, okay? It was only going to be a mm -hmm. class B misdemeanor. However, the domestic violence portion of it enhances it, makes life a major pain in the butt, especially at your 22, right? So I'm choosing not to cite you today. I'm not going to release you guys together. I want you guys to stay away from each other tonight, okay? She's agreed to it. Take some time to yourselves. You guys both have the exact same story as to what led up to the incident. So. Taking some time tonight, I specifically. Really that. Like, you taking tonight away from each other is going to be the major breaker in all of this. I think that will help you guys, especially tomorrow when you guys meet up. Just try to not contact each other unless, like I said, first chattering, something happens. You guys have to jump in the car right now and drive back to Florida. That very same day, Gabby posted on her Instagram showing photos of the Arches National Park in Moab, Utah, with her caption being, quote, we decided to take the path less traveled on the other side of the arch. Seven days after the pair's encounter with the police on the 19th of August, they uploaded an eight-minute video to YouTube titled Fan Life on their channel called Nomadic Static. In this video, you can see the pair driving through Utah, camping, cooking meals, and all in all having a good time. However, as we know, some people tend to only show the good side of life on social media, so who knows what Gabby is experiencing behind closed doors. On the 24th of August, Gabby checked out of the Fairfield Insult Hotel in Salt Lake City, and that was the last confirmed sighting of her. It was around this time Gabby FaceTimed her mother, Nicole Schmitz, and she reported that the couple have left Utah heading to Grand Teton National Park in Wyoming. A day later, on the 25th of August, Gabby's mother spoke to her on the phone for the last time. The pair had stopped in Grand Teton National Park in Wyoming before planning to head to Yellowstone. This was also the last day Gabby posted on Instagram. She posted several photos of her standing in front of a mural wall. Gabby's mother told Fox News that she received a text from her on the 27th and 30th of August, however was suspicious as to whether it really was Gabby that had sent the text. On the 1st of September, Brian returned to his Northport home in Florida alone, and Gabby was nowhere to be seen. So, a couple went on a trip together, but only one of them came back. And the one who safely returned home refused to say anything. Very suspicious indeed. So eventually, Gabby's family came to know about this, and obviously it was very concerning for them. On the 11th of September, Gabby's family reported the 22-year-old missing to the Suffolk County Police at 6.55pm. 
When the police knocked on Brian's door that night, his parents handed the police a lawyer's phone number. The investigators tried to speak to Brian, however, he refused to cooperate. Instead, they were asked to speak to Brian's attorney. The police subsequently took the couple's white van for evidence. On the 13th of September, Gabby's mum and stepfather held an emotional press conference begging for the public's help. Gabby's mum, Nicole, told reporters, quote, The first couple of days, I wasn't getting responses. I believe she was in a place with no service. It was day 8 and 9 that I really became concerned. On the 14th of September, the Laundry family shared a statement through their attorney, which says, this is understandably an extremely difficult time for both the Petito family and the Laundry family. It is our understanding that a search has been organized for Miss Petito in or near Ground Teta National Park in Wyoming. On behalf of the Laundry family, it is our hope that the search for Miss Petito is successful and that Miss Petito is reunited with her family. On the advice of counsel, the Laundry family is remaining in the background at this juncture and will have no further comment. On the 15th of September, Brian is named the person of interest. Still, he chooses to remain silent and rejects all interviews. Gabby's family, on the other hand, is desperate for their daughter to come back home and is frustrated with how Brian is staying silent. The police are working hard to locate Gabby, using drones, scent-sniffing dogs and more than 50 officers to search around the trails for her. On the 19th of September, a YouTuber shares a video showing what they believe to be the pair's white fan in Grand Teta National Park on the 27th of August. In the evening of the 19th of September, the FBI announced that a body believed to be Gabby was found in the area of Spread Creek. An autopsy of the body is scheduled for the 21st of September to confirm the identity and possible cause of death. Thank you so much for watching. Please do consider subscribing. Click here to watch another video and please do stay safe and stay alert out there and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.